Hey everybody, this week let's look at The Angry Charles by Pedal PCB. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Before we get into this pedal PCB build, I wanna remind you guys to click the subscribe button down below and also hit that notification icon as well. So this week is the second build in a three-part series that's looking at clones of famous JHS pedals that clone Marshall amps. Last week we looked at what I called my OD OD, which was a clone of the Charlie Brown, which was trying to emulate a Marshall JTM 45. This week, we're gonna be looking at a clone of JHS's Angry Charlie, which is the Angry Charles by Pedal PCB. And what this is trying to do is clone a Marshall JCM 800 Super Lead amplifier. So this week, I'm gonna try something a little bit different. I'm gonna walk you through the circuit analysis of the Angry Charles by Pedal PCB. But first, I just wanna go over a little bit of what it looks like, what to expect from the Pedal PCB order, etc. So first off, like with any pedal PCB build I've done in the past, all you're gonna get when you order from them is your unpopulated effects board. So you can see it here, it's black. This black board down here, unfortunately, was sold separately. Still came from pedal PCB, but you're gonna to need to buy that if you want to have a pinout board for your foot stomp switch here. On the outside of the angry Charles board, uh, you're gonna get three controls, your treble, middle, and bass. Just a quick note, the treble and bass is actually reversed on this compared to the Van Pelt drive that we looked at last week. So treble's on the right on this, this one, bass is on the left if I'm in this orientation. Um, you also get your volume and then the ever important gain knob. Now a little bit different from this compared to the Van Pelt drive or Charlie Brown clone that we looked at last week, this is a much higher gain pedal, which goes to reason the Van Pelt drive was looking to emulate a JTM 45. This is the more aggressive uh, JCM 800 or Super Lead amp. Again, everything fits inside of a 125B case nicely, you can see here. And if you're using those pinout boards, it really does make for a clean build. Another good thing to note is your input and output jacks are mounted on the top. Um, in pedal PCs, P in Pedal PCB's document, you're gonna get your full components list plus the drilling template that will allow you to position those correctly. It can sometimes be hard if you're just eyeballing it, especially where everything can kind of run into each other, if not where you have your DC input as well at the top. As for components list, this one's pretty straightforward. You've got two ICs in it. Uh, one is a simple TL072, and the other one is what I would usually refer to as the uh, RAT IC chip, it's again another dual op-amp package like the TL072, but in this case it's the LM833. Other than that, you have some standard diodes, so some shocky diodes, some red diodes that are used for clipping or hard clipping to ground, some pretty standard resistors and capacitor values, and that's about it. Um, the other thing that you might want to look into, which I love and it especially goes well with the drilling templates that Pedal PCB provides is if you buy the PCB mount potentiometers, everything should fit in there nice and cleanly. Uh, this build only took about uh, 30 minutes once I got all my components set aside and everything just dropped in uh, as expected. So with that, I wanna take you through the circuit. So this is gonna be a little bit different than I normally do. We're gonna to switch to the computer screen here. Hopefully you guys will find this useful. If you do, uh, let me know down in the comments below. Um, if you guys like it, I will continue to do it to the best of my ability. Sometimes some circuits get a little bit messed up, but uh, I think I can usually figure them out. So let me know what you think and we'll look at the circuit now. So I've gone ahead and downloaded from pedalpcb.com the documents for the Angry Charles PCB board. This is revision 101618. And you can see on the first page, you have a picture of the board showing all the resistor locations, capacitor locations, etc., and your components list. What we're really interested in though is on page two, and I'll rotate this clockwise and zoom in a bit, which this is actually the schematic for the circuit. So let's first, while breaking this down, um, look at this section in the lower left-hand corner uh, right here, which I would call the 
power section. So this is the section that's going to take that 9 volt input from your DC and use it to power the various um, amplifiers for the gain and the filtering stages. So here we have the plus minus which indicates your DC input. The first thing that's going to come off that is an LED through a resistor to one part of your three pole double throw foot switch. What this is is essentially your on off LED. So when this switch is closed, current is going to travel through that LED through this resistor, which is a current limiting resistor and to ground. So that LED will light up. Of course, your three pole double throw switch has two other switches in it. So when this is turned on, those other two switches are going to flip to put this uh, circuit functionality in play as well to give you your effect. Also coming off the positive side of your DC input is this diode. This is just a, a polarity uh, check here just to make sure that you have everything flowing in the correct direction so you don't fry anything. And this capacitor here, which is just gonna help stabilize that nine volt DC input. You can also see the LM833 and TL072 IC rails here. So that's gonna be between ground and nine volts. Those two chips are gonna be powered off of. And that is shown in the diagram as going between pins four and eight on both of those uh, op amp packages. Finally, off of the nine volt, you're also going to get these two 22K resistors with a input to a the TL072 or one side of the TL072 op amp in the middle. What this does is essentially it's a voltage divider effect. This is going to be one half of what that rail voltage is because these are both at 22 kilo ohms. So obviously these might not be matched exactly. So you might float a little bit around 4.5, but you're going to be more or less 4.5 volts here. We then go through a TL072 op amp, which is just creating a buffer here to ensure that that reference voltage of 4.5 volts is going to be stabilized. And that's also what this capacitor is doing as well. Moving on to the effects circuit. So if we scroll up, we have our input here. So this would be your input jack. Uh, the first thing you're going to see is a one meg resistor to ground. This is just to ensure uh, that we have high input resistance. So we're getting all the fidelity of that input signal. Similarly here we have the VREF, which we've talked about down here. That's going through a one meg pull down resistor just to make sure that we keep that 4.5 volts here on this input. So what we're actually going to see, and this is a high pass filter here, is we're going to see that your input is going to come in. We're going to use this capacitor to make sure that we don't have too much DC or, or no DC here. And then we're going to sit it on top of the 4.5 VREF. So this is actually a small signal, which is your guitar signal sitting on top of 4.5 volts DC. And the reason we do that is because these LM8 33s and the other TL072 at the end operate on a range from 0 to 9 volts. So we want our input signal sitting right in the middle of that. If we don't have that, then what we'll end up doing is clipping one side of the signal more than the other. Here we also have a uh, a drive circuit here. So this really is just a, a quick gain circuit using the LM833. So I won't get too much into this, but you can see that there's some filtering by this 100 picofarad capacitor and also the amount of this resistor that's put into the feedback loop here is going to uh, detail essentially how much gain there is. So as we bring more of this 100k resistor back into this circuit, uh, the gain is going to go up and that's all controlled by the drive potentiometer.
The next stage here, we're going to pass through a 100 nano uh, 100 nanofarad capacitor. So again, knocking off DC, we're going to put it back on here, uh, sit our signal on top of it, and we're going to go through a little bit of filtering. So mostly a high pass filter, just because we have this capacitor here, but um, there is gonna be some change in the tone that comes out of this part of the circuit. Once we're through the second LM833 or the second side of the LM833 package, we're going to go through another capacitor, which is gonna knock any of that VREF DC voltage off. So we're back sitting on a zero bias and we're going to go through these two, I believe they're red LEDs to ground. So this is hard clipping right here. So what this is going to do is, instead of maybe an overdrive, I would classify this as distortion clipping. Uh, it's just going to give you a, a much harsher sound than say something like if these diodes were put in this feedback loop here. And the last part of the circuit, which I'm not going to go into very much because it, it's a little bit of a, a ladder network here, but essentially what's happening is your signal is coming in here. It's being fed into three different networks and it's going to be filtered based on the frequencies uh, de defined by these capacitors and these sets of resistors. So here it's looking at only low frequencies, which is why you have your base potentiometer here is a specific range of mid frequencies, so your mid potentiometer, and then here is your treble frequencies with your treble potentiometer. The output of these three sections here for your base, middle, and treb are then going to be fed into the input of this TL072, so this is just summing those three signals and going to output them to the final stage, which is the volume stage. So essentially here, what we're going to do is come through this 2.2 microfarad capacitor through another essentially voltage divider, making sure that the resistor down here is much bigger than the resistor up here to maintain fidelity of the output signal. We're going to knock off some high frequencies to ground here, but most of it's going to be retained because we don't want to mess with all the frequency uh, manipulation we did in this last ladder network stage. As this volume goes all the way up, we're going to get a higher volume. As you bring that down to ground, obviously we're gonna to go to zero output. And that is the circuit. So hopefully you guys found that circuit review interesting. Uh, hopefully it wasn't as dull as maybe it was when I was putting it together here in the video, but uh, you know, it's, it's good information to have. I won't do that with every pedal, but if you guys like it, maybe I'll throw it in, in some new ones coming out. Um, so now we've got our, our uh, pedal completed. We want to plug this in, give you guys some demos, show you what it sounds like. It's just going to be a quick demo again, looking at what the, uh, you know, the EQ can do, how the gain control fluctuates, and then a couple of riffs to show you how it might apply to your own board. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this. That's it for this week. Uh, I'm going to send you out on the demo. Uh, make sure to subscribe down below, and thanks again for showing up and watching the video.